The Arabic word jihad means to strive and struggle. Yet over the course of time, it has become more associated with the word harb, which means war, and the word kital, which means fighting. So why do they need the extra word jihad to describe a holy war? Does it even mean holy war at all? Well, the short answer is no. What jihad really means is struggle. As we listen to the practicing Muslims, or when we watch popular commentary on social media from our progressive feminists, we come to know that jihad doesn't mean warfare or subjugation. But then again, almost on a daily basis, we come to see horrific images of murder, beheading, suicide bombing, car bombing, stabbing, genocide, burning people alive, drowning people to death, flying plane into a building, driving trucks over children, and all of these being carried out by the Muslims in the name of their religion. So what is jihad? Does Islam permit Muslims to kill innocent civilians only for the sake of their religion? Did Muhammad actually permit those things himself? Well, to know about jihad, to understand what it really means, we must turn our attention to the Islamic sources and today I will explain it to you with three specific verses from the Quran. We also need to remember that during Muhammad's time in Mecca, there was no jihad and the word jihad was only introduced when Muhammad came to Medina. And to explain jihad, I will use tafsir or exegesis of Ibn Kathir, who is considered to be the most famous commentator of Quran. The reason for using tafsir is to going back to the historical context of the verse, which is very crucial for appropriate interpretation. So first, let's turn our attention to chapter number 22, verse 40. And this is what we read in the commentary of Ibn Kathir. This is the first ayah, meaning verse, which was revealed about jihad. So anything regarding jihad was never revealed up until now. So what is jihad? Permission to fight is given to those believers fought against because they have been wronged. And surely Allah is able to give them victory. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Then I knew that there would be fighting. Imam Ahmed said, Ibn Abbas said, this was the first ayah to be revealed concerning fighting. So, this is the first verse which was revealed about jihad and this is the first verse to be revealed concerning fighting. So, from historical context, we come to see that jihad actually means fighting. Well, let's read on. So, when you meet those who disbelieve, Strike necks till when you have killed and wounded many of them. Then bind a bond firmly, thereafter either for generosity or ransom, until war lays down its burden. Thus, but if it had been Allah's will, he himself could certainly have punished them. But he lets you fight in order to test some of you with others. But those who are killed in the way of Allah, he will never let their deeds be lost. He will guide them and set right their state and admit them to paradise, which he has made known to them. So, we can see that Muhammad is telling his followers to kill unbelievers because they have been wronged, that their religion is not the right religion and hence he wants to punish them. And whoever will be killed during this fighting against the infidels will then be admitted into paradise as a reward. Fight against them so that Allah will punish them by your hands and disgrace them and give you victory over them and heal the breasts of the believing people and remove the anger of their believers' hearts. So, to heal the breasts of the believing people and to remove anger from their hearts, jihad or fighting is permitted. Well, let's read another verse from the Quran. Quran chapter 2 verse 216 and this is what we read from Ibn Kathir. Jihad is made obligatory. In this ayah, Allah made it obligatory for the Muslims to fight in jihad against the evil of the enemy who transgress against Islam. A Juhiri said, Jihad is required from every person. 
whether he actually joins the fighting or remains behind. Whoever remains behind is required to give support if support is warranted, to provide aid if aid is needed, and to march forth if he is commanded to do so. If he is not needed, then he remains behind. It is reported in the Sahih. Whoever dies but neither fought, that is in Allah's cause, nor sincerely considered fighting, will die a death of Jahiliya, pre-Islamic era of ignorance. So what is jihad? In our struggle? Or fighting and killing anyone who would oppose Islam? Let's read it again. Whoever dies but neither fought, that is in Allah's cause, nor sincerely considered fighting, will die a death of Jahiliya. In Surah 9 verse 29, Muhammad commanded Muslims to fight Jews and Christians until the pay the jizya or poll tax willingly and feel themselves subdued and accept their status of demitude. Muhammad is commanded to fight until everyone else testify that he is the messenger of Allah and if people refuse to do so, then it is okay to chop off their necks. So jihad means warfare, subjugation and taxation to make Islam dominate over all other religions. So why muddy the water over and over again? Telling people that jihad simply means inner struggle? That jihad does not mean killing innocent civilians. Clearly Islam rejects the idea of violent militant jihad. Fighting is only allowed, only permitted in self-defense when life and religious liberty are threatened.